other thing, the other task that you have as a group is to remind me to hit record. I have no idea what this is going to look like. This is, I'm actually glad, I'm glad we're starting because this looks funky. Um, we'll test this out. Interesting. Okay. Okay, so um, let's take a look at what we've got here. This is our comparison between intermolecular forces and intramolecular forces. So inter, intra. Um, so the intramolecular forces are things that take place within, a, within one molecule. Okay, so these include uh, covalent bonds, ionic bonds, things like that. The intermolecular forces are the forces between molecules. So if you have two molecules that are close together, how are they going to interact? Right? So that's what we want to focus on because those are going to show up in chapter 13. So there's uh, three types of, maybe four, four types of inter intermolecular forces that we talk about. Um, the first one being London dispersion, dispersion forces. Yeah, I need to practice. So these blue circles here, we're going to try to represent the dispersion forces of these. So every atom is going to have a type of dispersion force. And that is because they have electrons. Right? The more electrons, the more we can have dispersion forces. So basically what happens with the dispersion force so we can kind of imagine we're representing an atom by this sphere, set of spheres, or circles, excuse me. Uh, the center uh, represents the nucleus, and the blue represents some electron clouds, okay? Very easy drawing, doesn't, like, certainly not accurate, but we're going to try to imagine it like this. At some point in time, those electrons can all sort of move to one side of the atom, just sort of randomly. Okay. And what that then does is it creates a partial negative charge. Minus VE is negative. You, I might write that a lot this semester. So where the electrons are, they have a negative charge, right? So they create a density in that area uh, of negative charge. The opposite side of that atom then will have a partial positive charge, plus VE, positive. And what that does is it induces a dipole, basically creates this sort of instantaneous dipole. And it affects the other atoms around it. So now the atom next to it, the minus part lines up with the plus part Okay, electrostatic attraction. And this happens across a whole sea of atoms. Okay. They can switch. Now we have so now we have the negative on the right hand side, for instance, and then it induces the dipole. Another term that you may have heard about that's related to this, that describes this, is polarizability. So if an atom is polarizable, it means it can have a pole, right? Positive side, negative side. Some people, and I think the textbook now uses the word sloshiness of electrons. So uh, if your electrons are freely able to move, okay, uh, they can slosh to one side of an atom or slosh to the other side. Um, the more sloshiness, the more polarizable, the greater those forces are. So even um, noble gases, which uh, we know do not react, 
right? Um, we can take a gas and condense it down to a liquid. Maybe liquid helium, for instance. But in order to be able to do that, we have to make those atoms interact. And the way they're interacting is with this dispersion force. So every atom is going to have some kind of dispersion force. When we say what kind of intermolecular forces are present in whatever, number one is always dispersion. Okay, it's always there. Questions on that? What kind of forces are being represented in this picture here with the green and blue spheres? Dipole, dipole. So here um, we have atoms that are bonded together. We can say this is HCl, how it works, where the chlor chlorine has a negative, net negative charge and a um, hydrogen has a partial And because of the arrangement of, or because of the uh, electronegativity of the chlorine, um, we create a dipole within the molecule. So now we have to have two atoms interacting, okay, in order to have a dipole-dipole type of force. Um, and so what we're showing here with the pluses and minuses, these are partial positive. and partial negative. Negative is the green, positive is the blue. And look at what the arrows between the molecules are creating. They're showing interactions. And you'll notice that the positive charge on, we'll say it's the hydrogen, is interacting in some way with the negative charge on what might be the chlorine. Okay? This is the dipole-dipole interaction. The dipole-dipole is not between the two atoms that are in the molecule themselves. If this is HDL, then this is a covalent bond between the two atoms here, but the arrows um, are showing the intermolecular forces. Intermolecular forces are not going to be as strong as the intramolecular forces. That, that diagram at the very beginning. Okay. So one kind of interesting thing that dipole-dipole forces do is they kind of create a network. And so you can see as uh, we've got positive attracted to negative, and attracted to positive, and then we've got a, po a negative attracted to a positive, and things like that. So you can kind of imagine that the molecules have to arrange themselves in a way um, that allows for these interactions to take place. Uh, okay. Dipole dipole forces, then, because of the way they're interacting, are stronger than the dispersion forces. So we can um, take a look then again at our sort of spectrum of forces uh, from weak on the left to stronger on the right. Uh, we have our dispersion forces, then we have our dipole-dipole forces, then we have two others. We have hydrogen bonding and we have ion dipole. Okay. So this figure is representing hydrogen bonding. Hydrogen bonding only occurs in certain molecules. The hydrogen has to be bonded to a nitrogen, an oxygen, or a fluorine. Okay? 
So here we're going to uh, assume this is a water molecule. So we have H2O, two hydrogens bonded to an oxygen. The bonds between the oxygen and the hydrogen are not the hydrogen bonds. Those are covalent bonds. But the bonds that are shown by the dots, those are our hydrogen bonds. So we've got a hydrogen, oh, sorry, this is weird, hydrogen interacting with an oxygen, but it's not a covalent bond in that case. That's a hydrogen bond. Right. That's, those are easy things to get confused. Which one is the hydrogen bond? Again, it creates a really interesting network. And hydrogen bonds um, are uh, traditionally stronger than um, our, our London dispersion, of course, and stronger than the dipole-dipole. Okay. So you're going to see hydrogen bonding coming up in, in water. You're going to see it um, with ammonia as well. Those are two classic examples. There are others, of course, um, but those are the ones you're going to see the most. And then in the one last minute, just so you've seen it, Ion dipole, okay? So an ion dipole interaction, this will definitely come up in chapter 13. We're going to talk about dissolving ionic substances. So when you dissolve an ionic substance, you create an amount. And then we can have, um, if we dissolve it in water, we can have water molecules arranged around that. And those water molecules are going to arrange in a particular way based on the charge of the ion. So you can see here we've got a uh, negatively charged chlorine and our positive, partial positive charge on our hydrogens are pointing towards that. Okay. Opposite with the sodium ion. Okay. Right. 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 If you have questions, feel free to step on down. We've got a couple of minutes.